welcome to another video of programming in a l i have decided to show my face to say thank you because this will be our true hundredth video video number 200 is another milestone um thank you for everybody for the support for watching the videos and uh uh i've got positive comments great feedback from everyone and we keep going we keep learning and this the purpose of the channel is basically to help us get from basics to intermediate then to an expert level and um, we have been doing that in a good way using a series based format and a one video format and uh, I'm really grateful for everyone who has been watching. Um, today we are going to introduce a new series. As usual, this will be the query series. And this is an object that for me personally, I've not been really using it as much as I should be. And especially for data analysis, it enables us fetch huge amount of data in a very fast way and um, a query basically will try and create uh it will mimic sql server let's say it will mimic sql server this is an object that you can use for um in our web services page to set um okay to access data using our data with our web services we can um use it as a source table for uh okay a data source for our reports but now we have to define it as a global variable again and um so that we can now fetch from that global variable we can use it we can use a query like a record data source in the event that we need to this is the scenario a record a normal record will basically give you data for one table but what if you want to in a join you want to combine the customer and the customer ledger entry and you need to loop through the data of a, a data set that contains two or more tables then the query is our go-to choice here because it will we will use it like records but now we have the ability to get it in multiple data sources what else can we be able to do with a query we can also be able to use a query as a uh, source table <laughs> okay instead of using the source table but we need to transfer the data to a temporary table quite a process um, which which I haven't really utilized but we'll try and see how we can be able to do that as long as it doesn't add a lot of complications to to our um, to our query and then the, the other beauty of a query that's something that we should all leverage especially when your data grows when your data becomes big is to use the first of all you create indexes for the columns that you'd like to fetch for your query and then after creating those indexes then you will be able to use that query for fetching operations or for your um, web services and it will be much faster and um, you're basically using indexed queries you'll leverage the uh, the indexing of your sql server you will you can leverage the sum index field technology and all that and uh, we can also set the data access intent of our queries to make sure that our queries get us they will use okay so if you use the data access intent as to fetch only or to read only then our query will basically fetch from the um, replica of our production rather than the production database and it means our production will remain intact if we are fetching real-time data for our analysis and we have said that we only want to read our replica will be used to fetch the data and make it faster so we're saying that in a query we are basically mimicking sql server so in this video we'll just try and see how let's just remind ourselves let's juggle our minds about sql server for those who have not uh used sql server to query directly but I'm, i believe most of us have but 
it doesn't harm to juggle our minds back to SQL Server and what how we fetch. So this is the customers table. I have just uh, selected top a thousand customers, but we only have 75 customers as indicated here in our SQL Server. Uh, so this is a Docker container that I've installed for my SQL. It, 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 okay, I chose to install the SQL Express version automatically. So I'm getting these data automatically. So this is an on-prem Docker version, Docker installation of my, my server. So I've just selected all the customers. And you can see that in this scenario, we have specified the number name and all these fields that are contained in the table so that it can give us all, uh, it can give us the data here. So, but in an ideal scenario, when you are creating a query, for instance, so let's create a query of um, customers, for instance, T query. And um, should we do customers query, really? Let's do customers query. Oh, I've done the query of type API. I want the normal query. Let's just go back query of normal query let's start with a normal query not necessarily customers we can even go with item query then we have within our elements similar to how we define our report we can basically have our source table to be item then we we have okay we will cover the details of this but we have a column and a filter so a column is what will be displayed so it's like saying the number so i'd like to get to fetch the number from this item and then the other thing that i'd like to fetch is the quantity for instance okay the maybe reorder quantity but let's get let's get back to so this is just saying select number uh reorder quantity from item so what does this translate to in our sql server it's like saying so this one has got a long long table names so what you're saying is, uh, let's change this table to item. It's not picking. Select star. So if I replace this with item, I shall get something. item where is the item table here it is so let's execute this query So we have selected all the items. We have the select star from items, which contains 155 rows. All the items in our tables have been uh, queried. So the next thing here, okay, so this is the query. What if we, so what, whatever we have written in our um, query designer is sort of saying select number and then reorder quantity. The intelligence of this is not behaving. The field reorder quantity, where is it? 
just use it there it is i don't know why it doesn't want to to give me the value as it should be so the field is reorder quantity let's let's select this let's execute so we this query is much faster than when we just say select star because we have limited the data set that we are fetching. So if we select star, so this one was less than a second. That's why it it ran really fast. And uh, the first one, when we were selecting star, the query, uh, okay, now it has already fetched, but uh, okay, it, 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 it was faster, but we can see that the data set is bigger. So it means it will take more time, just a little bit more time to fetch the data set which contains many rows compared to when you have explicitly specified that you'd like the number and the reorder quantity. And this is what we are getting with the query. And <clears throat> we can, operations like group by, at times you want maybe uh for instance i'd like to to order by the item number the uh, quantity for the items all the items that have been fetched in the system so if i go to the item ledger entry let me filter these tables in sql So we want to fetch from the item ledger entry, for instance. Which field are we looking at here? We are looking at the amount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Filter, filter, filter. All right, so here we are. So the item ledger entry is here. And you can see it contains several records, over 399 rows. So what if we say, Select the item number here we are. So we select the item um, item number come on. Let me just copy them. Item number underscore. So we want the item number. And uh, the other thing will be the quantity, for instance. From this table, the item number and the quantity from the item ledger entry. So with this query, we if we apply the group by item number, so the result set at the moment contains 399 uh, rows. So what happens when we group by the item number? Do, do, do. There's a column that is invalid and uh, Okay, so we need an aggregate. Okay, I think it's my SQL skills have not been good of late. So let's see this. If we select without the group by for you to use the group by you need an aggregate. That's the point. Okay, this is invalid, so let's do this. So when we say select item number, we need an aggregate here, the sum of quantity, so that we can use the group by item number. Otherwise, it won't uh, be valid. So we select the item number, the sum of quantity, and so the data set has limited to 90 rows because we have grouped by the item. So it's, it's um, summing this quantity for this item number which we are grouping by 
we could also be having the count how many times two times or how many times it has appeared um, or the average is it average or AVG AVG and uh, you can see the average quantity that is in um, these items so we when we are using the query object we are basically leveraging this SQL server and we are creating our query um, we are we are getting the speed and we are also trying to get the best out of SQL server so I'm also in a process where I'm trying not really trying I'm convincing myself on why I should be using queries more often than I than I have been and um, I hope after the end of this series we'll also try and get use cases that will really impact on our performance in um, as we as we create our solutions because at the end of the and at the end of the day performance is really key a system that is fast will always win the day compared to a system that is uh, not as fast Thank you guys for the joining. That's it for this first video that is introducing the query series. It's been a little bit detailed to go to the SQL server and not as fast to mark the 200th video. I will see you in the next video. See you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.